Hey everybody, and welcome to part four of how to create your own trivia crack type game with Swift and Xcode using parse.com. Today I will be focusing on actually taking object IDs and plugging it right into your application automatically via parse.com. And then also we'll be focusing on score a little bit and also getting questions to not repeat so much. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our Xcode project for crack trivia. And we need to make this a bit bigger. And let's head right down here where it says self.question equals object. It's giving me three errors. Basically to fix these, you just need to ex add an exclamation point at the end of the as statement. This came with the latest update of Swift. So now we just need to go up here now and right inside of here, inside of our get random objects ID, what we're doing here is we're actually resetting object IDs equal to this array every time. And this is not how it's properly done. We actually want this to be when the view loads, then we set our object IDs. So let's go ahead, delete that right there. Go over to our view did load right up here. And before we continue on, let's head over to parse.com. So go over to Safari or Google Chrome, whatever you use. And I'm just going to search parse.com. And inside of parse.com, go to your apps, and we are going to work on the Crack Trivia app that we've been working on inside of our applications. So right here we have our Crack Trivia app right here. Go to Core, go over to Questions and Answers. And as you can see, we have our object IDs right here. Now the way I was doing this before was actually manually putting all the object IDs inside of an array. If I were to go back we are setting basically all these object IDs and putting it straight into an array. And what this means is that we're never going to be able to update our arrays unless we manually update our app itself. So in order to fix this problem, we just need to go over to our object IDs right up here. Go ahead, delete that. And now we want to call these object IDs and put them inside of our array. Now in order for us to do this, you just say var object ID query. So we're creating a query and this will allow us to call a PF query. So right in here, PF query, open parentheses, class name, and the class name is going to be questions and answers. Make sure it's spelled properly or else it's not going to work. I should have used a smaller name, but whatever. Now basically what this query is doing is we're going to grab a class from here. So if you remember, our class name right here is questions and answers. And this is the class that holds all of our object IDs. So now we actually need to go back here and we're going to call that class and separate all the object IDs and put it into an array so we can pick our questions from that array. So now down here to say object ID query dot find objects dot find objects in background with block. Then after that you go open curly bracket, enter, close curly bracket. And then after those curly brackets, we need to say open parentheses, close parentheses, and inside of those just say objects array. So we are going to store all of the objects inside of an array. So right after that say colon, open square bracket, close square bracket, and inside of these brackets say any object. So we basically are creating an array of any object, but we want to assign these to PF objects later. But right now you can only set it to an any object because we don't exactly know what we're grabbing from our object ID query. Now hit comma, error, error, colon, ns error with a question mark at the end. And be sure to make that question mark at the end of this one as well. Then after that, go arrow, so dash alligator tip void in. Now after this, this is going to be the block that we are going to run with these objects that we just created right up here. So right down here, we want to say var object IDs equals objects array. So it's going to be the exact same objects array that we created right here. And now we're going to assign this as an array of PF objects. So we need to say as exclamation point, open square bracket, close square bracket, and it's going to be an array of PF objects. Now inside of each of these PF objects, we have our object ID, we have the time it was created at, we have an answer, we have answers, we have questions, we also have an ACL. We're not going to worry about most of that stuff. We're just going to worry about the object IDs for now. So we'd say var object IDs equals 
objects array as an array of these PF objects that we created. Now we actually want to grab the object IDs out of this array and put it into our own object IDs array that we created earlier in this tutorial series. So now type in for, so for i in zero dot dot alligator tip, so meaning less than, so anything less than the objects, the object IDs dot count. And there should not be a space between this less than sign and the object IDs dot count. Now inside of here, we want to say self dot object IDs. Now this is getting a bit confusing. We need to go right up here. We're going to rename this object IDs array there right up here. We're going to say var object IDs and this will be our public array. So var object IDs public public array and then down here you want to say self dot object IDs public array dot append and we are going to append a new element meaning we're going to add a new element inside of these object ID array that we created. Now what exactly do we want to append? Well we want to append all the object IDs that are stored inside of this variable right here. As you can remember, this is a variable of all the PF objects that are stored inside of this class name questions and answers. So we want to go up here, go down here, and we're going to say object IDs. So just type that right in there for the I value. So I, open square bracket, close square bracket, I dot, and this will be object ID. Now a PF object has this object ID statement right after this. So we don't need to say for ob find this object or anything like that. We just need to say dot object ID. And then we're setting that inside of our public array. Then after this is done, we need to go over here to our call data. We're just gonna delete that and we want to call the data, meaning we want to call this function right down here where it gets the uh, random object ID. And we basically want to call this call data function as soon as this is all filled out. So as soon as the public array is filled with object IDs and all the object IDs are filled, we want to call the data. So right down here, say actually this will be self.callData. Now as you can see, we're getting some errors. Now this error right here means we actually changed the name of this object IDs right here. So we need to say object IDs public array. And I think that's what every error right here is for. So we're just gonna type that in public array. Now, as you can see, if we were to build and run this right now, we will actually get an error. Now, the way to fix this error, you need to go up here where it says var object IDs public array, and we just set this equal to a string value, and then we're going to add parentheses afterwards. That means this is a string variable, and this should not be a colon, this should be an equal sign. So now that should clear away any problems that we have inside of there. Now if we were to build and run this now, we should actually get our fully functioning game. And now we are actually pulling straight from our questions and answers parse.com and we are putting that straight into our application. So now we have what does the fox say, we can say high squealing sound, and it's going to eventually call another question. But the problem you will see is that we have tons of repeats. Now in order to fix these repeats, I figured out a solution for this. We just need to go down here and we're going to create a new function. And this function will delete the objects that we have already seen. So we need to say function remove question open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And inside of this, we just need to say, if our object IDs public array dot count is greater than zero, meaning that there is something still inside of these object ID public array, then we wanna say open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Then we wanna say inside of this if statement, we want to remove objects. So we say object IDs public array dot remove at index. Now what index is this? This will actually be our random ID. Now if you can remember what this is, this is the question that is being displayed already. So when we click on this, we are going to remove that question that is already being displayed from our uh, public array that we created right up here. And now we just need to add this function inside of our button actions that we have right down here. So in order to do this, let's go ahead and delete this function where it says call data. We are going to delete that from all these actions right down here, like so. And we are going to add that straight into our remove function data. So right after it removes, 
So basically what we're doing here, we have an if statement. If there's still something inside of this public array, we're going to remove our object, and then we're going to call a different object right as soon as this object is removed. And this will make it so there are no more repeats of the same old questions. So now down here inside of our button one action, we just need to call our function, which was called remove question. And we would just want to call this inside of every action that we have. And be sure that you put it in where it says correct, or else if you get it wrong, then you're going to also call another action, although you might want a game like that. So now let's build and run. And as you will see, I have what is my name. I click Jared, and now I have high schooling sound, and then I have what is the average weight. I don't know that, and we have an error. Now this error means that we have removed all of the objects out of our array. Now in order to fix this error, you just need to add an if statement. And we say if our object op ID's public array dot count is greater than zero. So basically we're doing the exact same thing. If there is something inside of our public array, then we want things to happen. Now right down here where after everything is done, where it says else this, there is something wrong, you wanna add another curly bracket. And this will just close up this if statement. Now what happens when we actually do run out of data? Well, we want something to happen. We want uh, basically to say that you won or how, what your score is. So in order for this to happen, you say else, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And now this if statement it will run if this if statement right up here is not true. Basically meaning that there is nothing inside of these objects array. So we're going to run this else statement. So now down here in our NS log, let's first so now down here in our else statement, we just need to write ns log, and we're going to type in our open quotation mark, close quotation mark, and inside of these open quotation mark, close quotation marks, we're just going to write it simple text in here right now. We're just going to say u1, and this will let us know that we have run out of objects inside of our public array. So now let's build and run. And now we have, what does the fox say? We can say high squealing sound, Jared. And I don't know that. Now, if we head over to our command prompt right over here, you will say you won. So now our else statement is running, and this is showing that we have nothing left inside of our public array that we created. Now, next thing we need to do is just count score. So let's go ahead, create a variable, and we're just going to call this score. And we'll make this equal to zero. This is going to be a quick score. We'll get more into score later in this tutorial series. But right now, we're just going to set up the score so it counts how many times you got something correct. So right down here, we're going to say var score equals zero. And then right up here, to keep things simple, since this function right here of remove question is already being called anytime you get something correct, we're just going to say score plus plus. And this will add one to the score every time this function is being called. Now down here, inside of our call data function, inside of this else statement, now we actually want to say you scored so much points. So we, so we need to say slash, open parentheses, close parentheses, and inside of these parentheses, we're just going to say score. So basically what this is doing is we scored, and then it's going to add the variable inside of this NS log that we created. So now if we were to build and run this, you will see that we have what is the average weight of an American swallow? We can say, I don't know that. What does the fox weigh? High, high squealing sound, and then Jared. Now this is the last question that we have, and it's going to give me this thing that says, you scored three points, and you are correct as well. Now one thing you can see is when I build and run this, the app loads, but multiple questions come on. It, it's kind of a flicker. It's not good to look at. So now let's go up here, we're into our view did load, and right up here we're gonna say for i in zero dot dot, where, where this for in statement is. Basically we're calling this call data function too many times, and we actually just wanna put this right outside of this objects array. That way we don't have it calling so many times and getting this weird look to it. So now if we were to build and run, what is the average weight of an record can swallow? I don't know that. What is my name? Jared. And high schooling sound. And that is our last question. And we get you scored three. That's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to share these tutorials with anyone that you think might be interested. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Hey everybody, welcome to part four of how to create your own Travia Crick. Travia Crick. <laughs> <laughs>